Mishnabura chapter four Mishnabura chapter four hundred and thirty two the law as regards the blessings to be made over the examination for Hametz Shulchan Aruch Paragraph one Before one begins to examine for Hametz he should say a blessing with the wording who has sanctified us with his mitzvahs and commanded us over the disposal of chametz. If one began to examine for chametz without having said the blessing and he later realized this, he should say blessing then, as long as he has not yet finished his examination. One must take care not to speak between the making of the blessing and the beginning of the examination. It is desirable not to speak of other matters until one has finished the entire examination so that one will devote his attention to examining all the places into which Hametz is brought. Paragraph 2 One may examine several houses with a single blessing. If the head of the household wishes, he may get members of his household to stand near him when he makes the blessing. They may then disperse to examine for chametz, each one of them in his own area, relying on the blessing which the head of the household made to serve for their obligation to make the blessing. The Ramah. It is the practice to place pieces of chametz in a place where the examiner will find them, in order that his blessing will not have been in vain. However, if one did not put such pieces down, this will not prevent the blessing being of value, as everybody has in mind when he makes the blessing to dispose of chametz if he does, in fact, find it. Now, back to the Mishnah Brura. Note 1. <coughs> So before one begins to examine, it should be said then in order that the blessing will be made immediately before the performance of the mitzvah. He should say a blessing. Point note two. There are authorities who say that it is desirable for one to wash his hands beforehand. This is only required in order to perform the mitzvah in cleanliness. Note three. The bracha al biur chametz. Actually, one will not. Although, sorry, although one will not actually dispose of the chametz until, until the morrow, this wording is nevertheless applicable, for since the examination is done for the sake of disposing of chametz, it is of the nature of chametz disposal. One should not word the blessing al bidikat chametz of the examination of chametz, as the examination is not the final stage of the mitzvah. One should also not word the blessing al bitul chametz over the nullification of chametz, as the essential part of the nullification is dependent on the mind, and one does not make a blessing over matters which are done with the mind. If one worded the blessing leva er chametz to dispose of chametz, he will have fulfilled his obligation. Note four, where. Uh, he should say the blessing if he forgot to say it first, as long as he has not finished his examination. Note 4. This is because as long as one has not yet finished the examination, he is still classed as being at a stage immediately before the performance of the mitzvah of examining for chametz. If one already finished the examination without having made the blessing, he should not make the blessing now, but should make the blessing on the morrow at the time when he burns the chametz. This is possible because the blessing is worded al biur chametz over the disposal of chametz. Although he will have nullified the chametz on the previous day at the time of the examination, he will nevertheless not have finished disposing of it, as he is also obliged to burn the chametz by, by ordainment of the sages. Furthermore, he will have worded the nullification then all chametz which I have seen, which I have not seen, but will not have nullified the chametz he could see. 
There are Achronim, who are of the opinion that the blessing was ordained to be said only at the time of the examination. According to their view, one should make the blessing without mention of the divine name, and the fact that he is king if he makes it at the time when he burns the chametz. It appears that if he wishes to rely on the other opinion and make the blessing then in full, one should not protest against him, as he has poskim on whom he can rely. So, note 5, one must care, take care not to speak. That was between the bracha and the examination, starting the examination. Once it is after the event and one talked of matters then which were not necessary for the examination, he must make the blessing again since he thereby made an interruption between the blessing and the mitzvah. Note number six in Mishnah Brura, it is desirable not to speak of other matters until one has finished the entire examination. If one merely failed to fulfill this requirement, it is unnecessary for him to make the blessing again. Once he already began the performance of the mitzvah before he started speaking. Speaking of matters which are necessarily for the examination is also allowed initially, for that is not considered as an interruption at all. Note number seven, Mishnabura, several houses. So same one, bracha, for several houses. Although this will involve going from house to house, that is not regarded as an interruption of the examination. If one examines his house and his shop and the shop is in another courtyard, he must make the blessing again before he examines the shop. However, I have discovered that the Chak Yosef and the Mamar Mordechai are of the opinion that the entire examination constitutes the fulfillment of a single mitzvah. They reason that one is ob obliged to go and examine all the, all the places which have chametz, and there is therefore no question of saying that going from one place to the other is regarded as an interruption of this examination. Note 8. He may get members of his household to stand. Correspondingly, he may get another person who is not a member of his household to examine for him and rely on his blessing. The author of the Shulchan Aruch merely speaks of members of his household because that is the common case. This accords with what is stated in the Gemara that there are localities where people are hired to examine. Just see footnote 1, writes in Pesachim 4b. When another person does the examination of the household, should at any rate help in the matter, as it is better to do a mitzvah oneself rather than by means of an agent. Now from the standpoint of binding halakha, one can rely on the examination being done even by women slaves but not by non-Jewish maids or children. Nevertheless, initially it is proper to rely only on free Jewish men who have reached the age when they are obliged to fulfil mitzvahs, i.e. males of the age of 13 years or more. The reason is that the examination, if done in accordance with halachic requirements, involves a lot of exertion and there are grounds for fear that women, etc., will be lackadaisical about it and will not examine well. Note number, one, number nine. When he makes the blessing. So what was note number nine? So members of his household to stand near him when he makes the blessing. So note number nine, so that they will fulfill their obligation to make a blessing by means of his blessing. Uh, they may then disperse to examine the chametz, each one of them in his own area, relying on the blessing. They rely on his blessing. If the head of the household does not intend to examine the chametz at all himself, but bids another person to examine for it instead of him, the other person must make the blessing, since he serves as his agent with respect to the making of the blessing as well. Note number 11, which the head of the household made. How are uh, so the bracha made by the head of the household? However, if they did not hear his blessing, then initially they should not be sent to examine for chametz. Nevertheless, it is difficult for the head of the household to complete the examination on his own. Sorry, if it is difficult. 
He may ask another person to help him, and that other person does not need to make the blessing. This is because the entire examination constitutes a single mitzvah, and the head of the household already made a blessing over it. Note number 12. It is the practice to place. Ah. Practice to place pieces of comments in a place where the examiner will find them. Okay. So i.e. firm chametz, which will not crumble. It should also be placed in a place which is protected from children and mice. And note number 13, however, which is, however, if one did not put such pieces down, this will not prevent the blessing being of value. Okay, so 13, however, there are my disputes the reasoning underlying this practice and is of the opinion that even though one may not find This does not matter at all. The Taz writes further that the blessing also relates to the chametz that one will definitely dispose tomorrow, i.e. the chametz which will remain after he has eaten. It is merely that the disposable, disposal of chametz begins that day with the examination made at night, as explained above in section 431. The acronym agree that this is the halakha calling to be followed. At any rate, it's not advis advisable to abolish any established practice of Israel. See there where he gives reasons for the practice. The Ari of Blessed Memory also writes of this practice and states that one should place ten pieces of chametz for the examiner to find. However, one must be very careful that none of the pieces should get lost.